Well, good afternoon. I'm Theo Douglas. I cover city government for the Bakersfield, California, and this is off the press. It really says that behind me, even though I myself can only see the word press. This is a show we do twice a week at uh, TBC Media. We look at uh, local elections, local government, and uh, you can catch it at bakersfield.com at uh, 3 p.m. on Thursdays, obviously, but then also at 2 p.m. on Wednesdays. And uh, today I'm joined by my colleague, James Berger, who covers county government, but then also uh, uh, by uh, Russell Johnson, owner of uh, Common Sense Consulting uh, and former uh, Ward 7 Bakersfield City Councilman. Uh, but then also uh, we're joined by Bakersfield's longest serving councilwoman. This is Jackie Sullivan. She's uh, an incumbent and uh, she is uh, challenged uh, I- November 8th uh, by uh, family law attorney Bobby Cloud. So we're here to, uh, to talk with her today about her uh, very long time on the Bakersfield City Council and uh, just hear all about uh, what she's done and uh, why she is indeed uh, seeking a sixth full term. Now, uh, welcome, Ms. Uh, Sullivan, first of all. Oh, thank you, Theo. <laughs> Happy to be here. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> wanted to uh, just uh, learn a little bit about, about you and uh, what prompted you to uh, get involved uh, in city politics uh, in the first place. This was all the way back in the uh, summer of uh, 1995. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell us uh, what you do in your private life, uh, you know, your occupation, and um, what prompted you to take that step and Wow. Well, run. that covers a lot of years. I know <laughs> it does. several different I know subjects. I it does. Several different subjects. Actually, I was born here in Bakersfield. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was in the, the first grade, we moved to Lake Tahoe. So I went all through school at Lake Tahoe, which was a, certainly a wonderful place to be raised. Oh, absolutely. Raised. It's beautiful. I was married right out of high school. And uh, then after after having four children, I returned to Bakersfield in 1970 as a single mom mm-hmm. with my four small children. Excellent. And so I have been here. Uh, actually, my family, my family was still here. So I've been here. And great place to raise a family. Never dreaming I would one day... Um, be part of the city government, but I certainly love city government, and and certainly this is home, and, mm-hmm. and love this community. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you're in uh, you're in real estate, I believe. Uh, that's your occupation, correct? I was for many years. Uh-huh. Yes, actually, um, <clears throat> when we first got settled mm-hmm. here, uh, I took care of other children. My youngest was two, mm-hmm. so they loved it. You know, always, uh, every day was a birthday party <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> with yeah. children, um, children over, so I did very well with that. I enjoyed that, and that allowed me to be home with, with my children. And then a little bit later, I uh, did get into the real estate business, mm-hmm. and uh, I, <clears throat> it was, um, actually, the early 80s, I got my license in 79, but in the early 80s, the interest rates went up, and yeah. so there was a lot of seller financing going on, mm-hmm. and uh, so I was wise enough. I had the opportunity to buy little places that basically nobody else wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, a, as a single mom, if I would have gone in to, uh, to a bank to ask for a loan, yeah. it would have made their month. I mean, it would have been so hilarious. Mm-hmm. I certainly could not have gotten financing. But with the seller financing that was going on, I started buying older, little, affordable properties. And um, I still have most of them. They're paid off. And and uh, it's kind of a from rags to rich, n- not riches, but um, financially um, independent type story. Mm-hmm. I always managed my money well and, and did some good investing. And just How many properties would you estimate you currently hold? Oh, quite a few. Mm-hmm. Quite a few. I see. Mm-hmm. Very good. Excellent. Yeah, and uh, I've had many of the, the same tenants. I haven't raised my rent, so mm-hmm. I... You know, I I call it affordable housing, mm-hmm. which it is. You know, I, I fix them up. I'm an excellent landlady. I when there's a problem, I I have a repairman. Mm-hmm. I have an electrician. I have a uh, a plumber. So I keep them in good repair. They value my business, and my uh, my tenants appreciate the fact that that I. We'll work along with them if they get behind, and and uh, but I keep the places in in good in good order. J- Jackie, good. I have uh, a I have a couple rentals myself, oh. so I can appreciate everything you've gone through. Um, I I'm going to remind you also get as close as you can to the oh, mic. Oh, okay, yes, thank the, you. The Russell. number one complaint I hear yes. from people that watch the shows they have a hard time hearing. Yes, folks, oh, so great. Um, so you 
owned all the rentals. You moved back to Bakersfield. And moved back to Bakersfield first and then, then started then the rental, when I got into real the real estate, estate business. business. Right. <laughs> what prompted you to say, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring for city council? That's a... Oh, you know, wow. Well, you know, that um, that is a really kind of an interesting story. I'll give you the short version. Um, you know, I have realized and said many times that, that the opportunity to be on the city council was really a gift from God. I lost my middle daughter. I have one son, three daughters. I lost my middle daughter a year and a half before. And uh, actually, um, uh, October of 93. And I did not realize that I was just going deeper and deeper into depression. And I wasn't even going anyplace. I mean, it was just too much effort to be even a little bit cheerful. Uh, and so I was just... I just didn't feel like going any place, and, and uh, so I got a telephone call. But we had s before supported other campaigns, and if someone is interested in in getting into um, into politics, we'll call it politics. Mm -hmm. um, I encourage them to first of all they have to decide if there's going to be an R or a D in front of their name, and then start supporting those candidates running on a local level. You need, to, you need to have an interest. You need to want to support good candidates and help good candidates get elected. So this one evening, um, I, uh, after 6 o'clock at night, I was watching the news, and I got a call from Connie Bruni, a uh, longtime AGO supervisor, mm -hmm. um, asking, uh, actually there was a vacancy in Ward 6, and I'm sure they were just going down the voters list looking for someone that could possibly be elected and electable. And so she said, Jackie, there, there, she said, there is a vacancy and we're looking for someone to run. Uh, would you, you know, think about it and call me back tomorrow? Well, I said, oh, fine. Thank you, Connie. Sure will. Completely forgot about it. I mean, didn't, didn't give it another thought. So the next night, Kevin McCarthy called. He was still working for Bill Thomas. This was back in, in uh, early 95. And um, <clears throat> working for Bill Thomas and said, Jackie, we, I was in business. Um, being a business person can be a good thing. Um, I, so I was in business and, and I had supported uh, Kevin and some of the other candidates, uh, local people at that time. I uh, said, come on down, we want to talk to you, and can you be here at, at uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning? And asked, okay, where is it? Uh, yes, I can be. And he, on the telephone he said, it, it, this is just a half term, so it would only be for a year and a half. We need someone to fill in for a year and a half. So, um, so anyway, got down there um, and met uh, Mark Abernathy for the first time. Connie was there, Kevin was there, and they started saying, you know something, y you know, we, we need someone. We think we could help you get elected, and a uh, year and a half. And Mark said, well, you're going to have to work for it, you know, the election. You're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to knock on doors. And that struck me so funny because here in the real estate business, that's the way you get into the real estate business, knocking on doors. Yeah. Yep. So I... You know, they walk <laughs> my neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I said, no. Well, that's not a problem. I that's, And that's something basically I enjoy, I enjoy doing. You, you greet people in a friendly way, and, and at least you they're nice back to you. So I, I had to go out and... Um, uh, I think they were helping me with my campaign statement. I had to go out and, and, and get signatures and got back to City Hall just maybe five minutes before five. The cutoff was that afternoon oh, at five. Wow. So it was just a, a miracle. Didn't even know if, if the signatures would be good, but got more than enough, which you always need to do because yep. some people will say, sure. And they're not even, they're embarrassed to say they're not registered, never have been <laughs> registered. Right. So you always get extra signatures. Yeah. But um, anyway, that's, that's how it happened. And, and uh, I was still in the real estate business. Um, but it's been, it, it's just been, um, it's, it's a privilege. And I, I, it's been very, very nice. Now, 
it's been a while since your first election, right? Or and have you been challenged before, or is this your first challenge? This ever? is probably my maybe my maybe my third challenge, okay. second, third. You know. okay. uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, so now I had the privilege of serving with you mm -hmm. on the council. Yes, so you sure did. I, I know what it's like uh, to sit up there, and I know what it's like to serve with you, and I had a fun time serving with mm -hmm. you. Um, Tell me about what you did in your past that you feel like made you prepared to sit on the Bakersfield City Council. You know, really, I think being in the real estate business was my very most perfect um, preview into this because you do a lot of things for nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're continuing, you know, you try to, evaluate the value of a person's property and you uh, get CMAs and I don't know if they, those are still the terms but you um, you need to, to be in them to be successful in the real estate business you need to have a heart for service and certainly on the city in, in city government you really need to have a heart for service because you're not in city local government city government certainly for the monetary benefit. And um, um, it, I think that's probably, I, I truly enjoy helping people. And you know all the things that we're asked to do, give, give uh, recommendations for jobs um, as a, um, and, I, and I enjoy that. That's really my greatest pleasure, helping. So, uh, I know at one point when I was on the council, you were given an award for being the longest serving city council member. How many years uh, have you served exactly for the benefit of the <coughs> listeners at home? Well, I was elected mid-year of 1995. So when I became the longest member, I served one meeting longer than Mark Salvaggio. I remember. <laughs> I remember. So that was that. That's what gave me that distinction. That was August of 2014, I think. Yes, yeah. yes. And, you know, I I didn't know. I really, I, I knew it was approaching. Mm -hmm. And then I had been so busy, I forgot about it. And uh, <clears throat> so Alan mentioned that they were going to recognize me publicly for being the longest serving council member. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad he did because then I, I fixed, I put on something a little bit better, <laughs> and um, but it was very touching to me. I, I didn't, I didn't expect it to be. Um, it, it was very humbling, uh, but <clears throat> I got a key to the city from mm -hmm. the mayor. I, I had never even seen one up close before. He's wow. pretty. He's pretty um, careful, you know, it has to be something very special to give a key to the city, which, which certainly rightly so. Mm -hmm. um, so I got a key to the city. I got a beautiful mantle clock engraved uh, from the council members and staff. Um, uh, David Couch came, mm -hmm. and I saw David before the meeting, and I thought, God, it's strange. Why is, why is David here? <laughs> well, he was giving me a, a, a proclamation of recognition, and I... So it was just, uh, it was made very special, and I was, I was thrilled. Now, one more highlight from when I served with you on the council is it's really more something I'm kind of curious about. You were really excited. I think you, on your birthday one year, you were going to go and jump out of a plane. Oh, my goodness. And yes. I, you got sick, or you had to run out of town or something. I can't remember what it no, was, and you I didn't do it that day. No, and did, I'll tell you, did you why. Did you ever... I'll tell go you. parachute. Uh, go my birthday in. is 12 12. Uh -huh. Well, that was year 2012. Mm -hmm. So it was 12 12 12. And so I thought, perfect, I'll jump out of an airplane. You know, and so I had the media involved. They were going to be there, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, different groups. My friends were going to be there, certainly my family. And the night before the Taft Airport called, 
and said they were having engine trouble. Oh, that's right. And so I said, well, right. it's not until tomorrow afternoon. Fix it. <laughs> you, know, you, you have time. Right. If you're they, having they a problem with the engine, plane. fix your engine. <laughs> I know. I know. It's you know, I said, plane. this is a big thing, 12, 12, 12, and, you know, we're going to have fun with it. And uh, they said, well, you could come back next week. And I thought, it's not 12, 12, 12. Nope. <laughs> and really, the main concern was that it would be so cold. Mm -hmm. You know, December oh, is, yeah. is very cold. And that was the main thing I was dreading. I wasn't too worried about jumping out of the plane. But I thought, oh, it's going to be so cold. And so I thought, well, why go through that coldness the week after 12, 12, 12. So I just haven't, haven't <laughs> uh, had reason to want to do that again. So that was the reason. I was ready. Everybody was ready. And the plane was not ready. Very good. <laughs> I remember. And finally he said, I said, well, we'll fix it. You, <laughs> you can get it fixed. He said, Mrs. Sullivan, it wouldn't be safe. <laughs> okay, that got my attention. Let me sure say, okay, that, that, now I understand. Thank you. Excellent. Well, uh, we're going to take a quick break here, but uh, we'll uh, be back in just a moment and we'll hear more from uh, Bakersfield's longest serving councilwoman, Jackie Sullivan, on uh, why she uh, is uh, seeking a sixth full term on uh, the Bakersfield City Council. I'm Theo Douglas, and this is Off the Press. Thanks for watching.